This is a plane of my own design. It's, uh, I've called it the K13. Um, 13, it's 13 inches long. It seems like the good, good name for it. Um, this was actually a client who uh, kind of threw the gauntlet down for me. He said, um, you know, I, I like the size of a panel plane, um, but I find it the tra more traditional form kind of clunky. So just rethink the whole thing. And he just kind of left it there and uh, it was a, a great, great challenge, and uh, it took about eight months of bouncing around in my head. And um, it was one of those rare moments where this, you know, light bulb goes off and drew it on the chalkboard in the shop, and um, tried to continue working and realized I got to keep the moment. And uh, ran in the house and just papers flew and drew and drew and, you know, over the course of several hours, had a full set of working drawings for it. Um, as built mock-ups out of uh, plywood and basswood and um, other materials, and it it came together relatively quickly, uh, which which was really uh, really cool and, and unusual. Um, it uh, one of the design criteria for it was a uh, a fast-looking plane. I wanted it. Um, well, obviously, the, the, you know, the client didn't want it to look traditional. Um, so, in comparison. That's the front grip on a on a jointing plane, but on a panel plane, it l usually looks very similar to that. It's just a little little bit shorter in length, but that's the overall form. Um, so from that standpoint, it's a pretty radical departure uh, for the front grip. Um, I was you know I was a little worried about uh, you know how it might be comfort wise, but um, the mock-up felt really great actually. So I thought, well, let's proceed and do it in a you know real chunk of rosewood. Um, and just kind of went, jumped in with both feet. Uh, again, in the, in the er, really early design stages, I'm not quite sure how it happened, but um, immediately I knew that it had to have curved sides, which, to the best of my knowledge, I've never, I haven't ever seen a plane um, other than a smoothing plane uh, with curved sides before. And it just, again, there was something about it that it, it just, that happened very, 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 very quickly. Uh, the lines on it are, you know, they're definitely, you know, infill inspired lines, but they are relatively modern. There's some interesting things about it. Um, one, there's a front sweep to it, uh, to the front pad, which um, gives a sense of motion. It's also radiused as well. It's very slight, but again, from an uh, ergonomic standpoint, um, you know, it just gives your hands a little bit more curvature and shape to wrap around, uh, wrap around with. Uh, this uh, cusp here, um, it looks really sharp, and if you actually feel it into, not in use, it's actually, it is fairly sharp, but if you just put, place your hand on top, uh, this little corner here grabs just a little bit of your, uh, the meat in your thumb, and it gives you really great registration, and you're not having to, um, uh, you're not having to have a death grip on it. It, 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 it actually holds really, really well, uh, which was a really, that's what I had hoped it would have. The curvature on the inside gives lots and lots of room for uh, removing chips or shavings, did away with the cap iron because, frankly, I'm not sure cap irons are doing anything other than acting as a mechanism for a mechanical adjuster. And I've never, I've made lots of planes without chip breakers and I've never seen them not work properly because of it. So, again, from a using standpoint, I wanted this to be as simple as possible. Pull the blade out, hone it, put it back in. You don't need a screwdriver and you're, you're back in business pretty quick. Uh, one of the other considerations was, um, a, you know, it being fast, was um, I imagined it in a wind tunnel. So I went, I eliminated everything that would visually give it drag. And you can, on the inside, it's hard to tell, but these, the shoulders on the lever cap are rolled up, are angled backwards to reduce drag. Um, there's not a whole lot of flat shapes to it. Even the inside here uh, has been rounded over. Um, which, you know, when you're grabbing it, if that corner was there, it's a pretty small opening, but because that corner's been taken off, there's a little more room and you're less likely to hit your finger on it. And it also aesthetically, I, I, it's a nice shape. And the, again, the, from a speed perspective, 
um, and wind tunnel perspective. Everything just flows and tapers off the end and disappears off. Cutting this too, um, you know, I, I, I knew this end had to be radius and thought, well, let's just keep mirroring it. This was a little bit tricky to cut, but uh, it was definitely worth the effort. Just, you know, com there's so many curves to it. It really, if that would have been squared off like it normally is, I think it would have, it would have matched everything else. Hmm. Well, the other thing is I shortened the screw as well. So that's because, again, I'm trying to keep everything as tight as possible. It's, this is about a quarter inch shorter than, than they normally are. So the, the grip for this, um, it is really unusual. And a lot of people have you know, tried holding it like this. It's, it's not as obvious as a classic form, or certainly not as a knob. Um, the best way that somebody described it to me was, he just put his hand on top and pushed. Or you can just put it down and 